Oh, wow. Right from the bat. Joe, Joe, Joe went in and out. <laughs> but usually I will start off with my sex stories, but I will spare everybody for that. Uh, <laughs> because, because the draft basically, we'll get into the draft, but the draft filled every sexual need that I need. Um, it's suspense. Um, what, like five minutes of uh, vigorous um, sweating, vigorous thinking. Um, don't know what's it was, gonna happen. It was for, I mean, it's it's like it's like a Zoom date right now is basically what it was. I mean, I got I've been blue balled this whole quarantine. Let's let's not make it more what it is. I think anything is getting anybody aroused. Like I I literally pulled open my microwave meal the other day, smelt the carrots and rubber chicken, and got a semi. So yes, we're still starting out the show sexual, and because <laughs> quarantine. You have no sexual uh, desires filled. There's nothing but tension constantly. It's driving me insane. Again, I just said a microwave meal aroused me. The gravy. I mean, it's, it has to be like the fake sauce or gravy. It, uh, what is it? Like day 48 of quarantine. This gravy is making me feel like some type of way. It makes that noise where it's just like... Like that noise. It's just the way it simmers out. The steam comes up. Exactly. When it drops from the spoon... Baby, but let's just get right and into it, baby. Way this fucking draft fell, baby. It was a tease. It was like, what is wrong with me? I'm getting aroused by gravy. I'm interested in literally some uh, second-rate girl who I, I think was uh, horn off at the NBA. Excuse my harsh terms, my non-PC terms. Was horn off with uh, what was it, Trey Young? Now over here, uh, throwing off with CD. Um, I mean, we got little things like that, like. It, it, great, it was fantastic, but at the same time, it was like I was aroused by well, gravy. I mean, it, that you, unsatisfied. We got, your, we got, we got our fixes boat, bedded. Dude. I wanted my boat. We, we, hey, you, you got your nuts off with the bedding. You got your nuts off with some sports. Lost a lot so, of money, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, I told you one of them was going to happen, and you didn't listen. I told you it was going to happen. But we're up uh, 600 this week for anyone that is following Little Joe's uh, video game simulation betting career so far in this quarantine. We are up 600 this week. I, I think total am up about 300 on this guy. It's been very up and down. But this week on MLB The Show Overs, Nudie, I am up uh, 600. Nice, baby. Well, that's a good way to start the show. I'm your host, Michael Shinudi. This is Face of the Franchise. The Pharaoh is back at it again with his partner, Little Joe. Ooh, um, the man, the people, the legend. Um, but the legend has um, some, some great announcements for, obviously, we are sponsored by Four Corners Radio. He is also the, the host of the most popular therapy session in the world, Free Therapy. My man, go ahead sure. with your announcement. Yes, sir. I'm very excited to say, yes, we had a little teaser kind of like Rick and Morty da, uh, did way back in 2018 where they had the April Fool's episode to tease it. And about three months later, they went ahead and continued with season three. We had our teaser episode co about a couple months back with, of course, my man Pharaoh himself. Woo! Now we are rolling it all out officially week by week. Little Joe is back for free therapy. Why pay $100 a week? Because once again, Little Joe's coming to you every Wednesday for free. Next week episode on totally covering anxiety with a special guest that I'm excited about. Um, next following week going to be about getting over disparity, persevering through tough and traumatic events. Then after that, we're going to have a little fuck around session, but a goof all, a goofball feeling good about yourself, but trying not to feel too good and not listen to that lazy voice too much, especially during these times um, and that third week coming up so we got some guest booked ready to rock ready to record on the zoom or skype boom free therapy coming back I'm, I'm very excited you know i'll be listening to it and i hope all our loyal fans here at face of the franchise goes listen to the free therapy but also everybody else at um last night's nice guys bread and butter else? dj or us hooping and hollering five dollars yep. let's yep. go baby we have all of it we got all seven of us we're doing our thing but you know what this is Face of the Franchise, where we talk football strictly. I mean, we're going to talk about the NFL. Dr Wait a well, minute. We talk about, we talk about Wait a football minute. Hold on, hold on, strictly hold on, because Joe. Hold on, hold on. Uh, we're going to talk about the NFL draft. Hmm. Wait a minute. Isn't there an update? Crackhead, dickhead, update of the week. We can't help ourselves. If you, um, there's a lost tape 
that uh, from Instagram Live that will probably never be found. Um, but voice might, hopefully one day will be found, just like the Dave Chappelle lost tapes. That voice might, my anger at Crackhead Dickhead Update of the Week. I think I was showing a little frustrations even uh, two weeks ago's episode. But it got me to fall back in love with it, dude. You stayed persistent. You stayed committed to our dickhead. He just shows up. I don't do anything. He just shows up. He just it's falls there. He, and it's just like, like you can't. It's like the. It's like what when you used to watch Jersey Shore. We all didn't really want to like admit that we watched Jersey Shore, but we watched the reunion. We watched everybody. when they came back after the uh, family the shit. Yeah, and fucked up his taxes and needed the paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> we, you keep going, and this is this is no different, man. You got me back onto it, and boy, did I just found a caveat of just microwave gravy, for lack of a better word. Um, <laughs> I can tell you right now. That's the way to put it. One, one, he uh, <laughs> he has an 11 minute video, which I only got 30 seconds in. Apparently, you've watched it and just explains about how you've operated yourself the last couple of weeks. Because I lost about 30 IQ points just from watching Floyd Money Mayweather <laughs> and Antonio Brown, which I believe they were trying to talk about how a recent scene they're attempting to talk about how to better invest their money and, and how to uh, how they build up their fortunes. Quote unquote. But, Quote, right, in quotes, because News says if you do or are able to uh, suffer through the whole video, it's essentially talking about tax evasion. Um, which really, I am not going to go ahead and lose those IQ points and watch this whole entire video. I will just tell you, if there was a video out there that was seven to ten minutes long about tax evasion and how the white man um, is successful uh, and is stealing all the uh, all the black man's success, it is A B and Floyd Money Wayweather because. He did talk about they did. He did bring up Trump. He's like Trump did it. Why can't we do it? Da da da. It's like dog. You're on to something, baby. Hey, don't sleep. Like, don't sleep on the underrated geniuses of the world, baby. They're they're they're, they're, they're one percent for a reason. Okay. This is this is my problem with it. He basically that's evidence in court, dog. Like you just said it. Like <laughs> this is that's all I'm mad about. I don't care about the Trump thing. You're black, white, doesn't matter. There's no video out there that Trump is like, I tax evaded. There's literally a video of them both saying, we want to tax evade. Or Floyd, in Floyd's case, I did it. I definitely, I that's like, it, that's like OJ say, making a book that says, if I did it, which there is a book like that. And look what happened. Yeah, there is a book that said, if I did it, this is how I would do it. <laughs> Anyways, but there's more to the story than this shit. There is, there is. Not only that, um, he... Apparently, Nude, you told me he Snapchatted himself, or on Snapchat, uh, worked, photoshopped a picture of himself, number 84, and my beautiful, not mine, of course, I am that terrible burgundy and gold, unfortunately, but in the Ravens and Lamars, our kings, uh, gold and black, or purple and black, if I can talk here today, and <laughs> Jesus Christ, you gotta let it go. They said no. Everybody said no. It was one hangout sesh. It's like it's like if I hung out with you. It's, let's just say we didn't know each other. We didn't do this show. We didn't have this beautiful, wonderful friendship. And you, we went ahead and we hung out once. And then I continued to text you every single day. Yeah. One, I'm, no. not, I'm not trying to fuck you. You know, <laughs> I'm. <laughs> what like what? Anyway, what? How did you feel? What was your concern? Because I, I was just flabbergasted. Well, as you usually, can usually I'm on the side of like I'm gonna be biased. I'm gonna be like, oh, Ravens, you suck. Blah blah blah. Now, I'm going to take the unbiased route, especially when it comes to AB, because it's funny as fuck. Because I think he's the only person in the world that makes me so say all this stuff. That's why I had to dive back in. I'm happy you made me dive back in. So, let's be honest. The Ravens were 14-2 and last year. The reason why they probably didn't beat the Titans is because uh, their defense really wasn't as great as it used to be. Um, they definitely showed that up this year. We'll talk about them in the draft. Yes, we um, will. Harbaugh is one of the most... Um, resilient coaches out there basically mm -hmm. he switched the game plan from joe flacco to him gm probably one of the best front offices they're they're a super bowl contender we can't lie on this show um do i hate him with all my heart of course would i love ab to go there here's the reason why i say of course because ab would be the only guy to infiltrate there and fuck everything up but let's be honest the ravens are not stupid they're not going to go after this guy if bill belichick and tom brady can't keep him in check what makes you think any team in the NFL can, especially the Ravens? The Ravens, no, and this is nothing against the Ravens. The Ravens know in their minds they were maybe a couple plays away from being in the AFC Championship game against Patrick Mahomes, and then we would have a huge blowout 
probably this show would be canceled. And um, you probably would have murdered each other. It would have ended well. And when that does happen, it probably will not end well. <laughs> yeah. So my pro- my point is, why blow up a good thing? And I think the Ravens are thinking the same thing. I think Lamar did a diplomatic thing, and their GM did a diplomatic thing, not closing the door, but saying no. They're like, oh, we'd be happy to. We evaluate players no matter what. We do this. Everybody says that shit. Nobody's going to say, oh, no, AB's a dickhead. We're not going to say no. Like, of course. Like, nobody wants to come off as that asshole. Like, the M- like Michael Jordan in, those, uh, in the documentary now, the 10-part series, shout out. But I'm just saying, like... No, no, absolutely not. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's well said, man. I think th- to put it in one sentence for you and just wrap up our crackhead dickhead segment of the week is the NFL has officially left you on red. The Ravens have left you on red. They made the mistake of replying once. They're not going to reply again. And it's over. It's done. And your new song is scary cringeworthy. It's not even worth a bit. Don't play yeah. the show ever. That's it. Yeah. Like, it's just like you're being you're being that crazy ex-girlfriend that the the boyfriend is just like, dude, we moved on. Like, just go. Like, stop. stop it's not, it's worse to- than that, though, Nudie, because it's worse than that. All right? Because now that he's moved on to other teams, okay, was like that for a little bit. But now it's he's trying to date new girls and they're rejecting him. He hasn't it's, even gotten to that place anymore in my brain. He he broke up with the ex that's long gone, the Steelers, the Raiders, the uh, the Patriots. He dated them all. Didn't go well. Now he's trying to date again, and everyone's leaving you on red because you yeah. they see the damage you caused. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me try, twice, shame on you. Or no, fool me once, shame on me. Or shame on you. Fool me twice, shame Get on me. Get back, buddy. Yeah, and then three, fuck the peace sign, baby. J. Cole. Anyways. Yeah, that was you you pushing the fuck out of that wonderful line by Jay. Fuck, yeah. Fuck, fuck everything. Fuck all that shit. Let's talk about Let's something. Fuck that the peace nice. signs. We pull up on you. Some. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna butcher it too. Continue. <laughs> NFL draft, baby. The 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 wait is over. We had a draft. Everything went out the way it should have. Burrow one, Chase two. Um, Lions drafted a corner. Uh, Giants fucked up their pick by picking a lineman that wasn't even supposed to be that high up. You Country know, boy, tomato, 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 tomato. We could go through every pick and say that, but let's just go. Uh, I'll kick it off to you first, Joe. Who was your biggest? Who was the best team that drafted last weekend? Uh, you know where I'm going with this, and again. I promise you, everyone, I am not a Ravens fan, but you said it yourself. Eric DaCosta and the boys and Harbaugh up at that front office did a wonderful, wonderful job. They always do. Yep. And this year, once again, outpaced themselves, man. I think I'm going to start at the bottom of their picks, actually, if you don't mind, dude. At Go round it, six, dog. from SMU, this boy, James Approach. I don't know if you had a chance to watch his highlights. All Face of the Franchise listeners, when you're done listening to another fantastic episode of Face of the Franchise, of course, go YouTube his highlights. I, this boy is going to be Pony Express. Express right now. This is a grown-ass man in a fucking daycare amongst little children when he gets in this league. Yes, he may only be 5'11", so he's going to be shorter than everybody else. Yes, he's 198, but this boy has hands like I've never seen before. This, I mean, he is an absolute cannon. Our absolute rocket coming out of a cannon. I mean, I am excited to see. I think he's going to end up one of the best sleeper wide receivers of all time, not only in this draft, but, again, of all time. Um, besides that, you got, they were wheeling and dealing in the third nude like I've never seen before. I think there's a lot of beautiful moves, a lot of great holes that they feel that we talked about they needed to fill on defense. Um, and they, they were looking like Davy Day Trader who's become famous amongst here, or if you're a Billions fan, looking <laughs> like Bobby Axelrod. Um, hey, for all my billions. Nice. Yeah, there you go, baby. And you watch, I just got into it, dude. I'm in season two. I'm loving it. Um, I, I need a little bit more. Does it give me, start giving me a little bit more, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to give you anything. But, yeah, okay. season three, three, four, we'll wet, we'll wet your beak because I think season five is about to get great. But let's go back to the draft. <laughs> yeah, okay, wait, 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 back to the draft. Um, yeah, no, hats off to the Ravens here. I think, once again, they did everything they needed to do for them to see 
the uh, the Chiefs in that ABC championship game next year and to ultimately, of course, defeat them as they continue to build around the best franchise, the face of the franchise, the best face of the franchise of all time. That is Lamar Jackson. Okay, listen, so because you picked a division rival, I guess I got to pick a division rival, but I will, but it's a tie for me. So I will keep the division rival later, but I will start off with the team that almost beat Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl, who were who just basically crumbled. And the hey. team, I don't know what ha- what John Lynch, John Lynch is a better GM than I thought, and Kyle Shanahan is a better drafter as a coach than I thought, too. Listen, when you lose to— the best coach in the world. He used to have the biggest flaw is that he just gives up leads in Super Bowls. Sucks. And listen, you lose, you lose Emmanuel Sanders. Okay, there goes that. You lose uh, DeForest Buckner on your line, okay? whatever, and then you lose Joe Staley um, to retirement. What do these fuckers do? They trade Divorce Buckner for the first pick. What do they do? They get his replacement. And Keenlaw, who I think is going to be a superstar. I think Keenlaw is actually the guy I'm picking to shock the world. Shout out South Carolina. Shout out D-Mike. Um, hey, D-Mike. And then, and then they have the 31st pick. What do they do? They do something that the Eagles wish they could do and pick a wide receiver. That actually makes sense. A guy who's under six foot, but his wingspan is 81 inches. Tell me who had an 82-inch wingspan in the NFL draft before. Calvin fucking Johnson. Megatron. Dude can catch it out of the park. All right. Do you think this is over? No. They draft more defensive players, more depth. And then I'm like, okay, this is great. They're, they're, they can't top this. Yes, they did. They call your Redskins and say, we need a tackle. We need it right now. What can we do? Well, we'll give you a fifth this year and a third next year or a reverse. I don't remember. But let me get it. Was, uh, of, it was a fifth this year. Third, you got it right. Third let me get year. one of the best tackles in the NFL to protect Jimmy, check down G, and I'm going to surround him with the same weapons. They get rid of Brita, which we'll talk about later. So now you have Moistert and Coleman, who I think are better than Brita because Brita is a shack of shit and always gets hurt. Shout out to my fantasy team. That's why I'm pissed at you, bitch. And <laughs> you had a couple of decent weeks, buddy. <laughs> but no, all great, great draft by a great team. I don't see them. They go back to contending again. They go back to, they reload, they go, they go younger, they contend again. Now to the division rival. And real quick on that for a moment, though, if you don't mind, yeah. I don't think they got enough credit for it either. And in the media and the, which would have you, that's why Face of the Franchise is bringing it to you. Because, I mean, I think really, I mean, they were dealing like savants in this draft. I think it's yes. really just under the radar in terms of how much impact they had. And they made themselves even stronger and to definitely be on that stage again and hopefully hold a lead. Well, it's funny because I, like, the two teams I was like, what the fuck is going on? Was the Ravens and the 49ers? Like, to touch on your Ravens real quick, <laughs> the Ravens at one point had, like, every pick in the third round, and I was like, how do they have all these picks? <laughs> I think they, they had six. They had six <laughs> they, total. But the Ravens, they always do well in the draft. I've always said that. They, they, they are usually good at drafting. It happens every year. 49ers, though, are new to the game. That's why I'm shocked. But somebody who needs to draft the way that they drafted this year from year on out is the Cowboys. Jerry Jones needs a draft on the fucking yacht from now on. Dude, didn't take the, <laughs> the, the a need. No one dude, bothered me for my waters. Dude did not take a need. Dude did not take anything. He picked the best player. He picked probably the best wide receiver in the draft, C.D. fucking Lamb. And now you have C.D. Lamb. Now you have NFL ready. Already had like a, a pro professional athlete thought on his arm. So yep. just don't touch my phone. I mean, I'm so jealous that they got this man. And I mean, we're going to get to their new fire quarterback at the end of the show, too. That's just going to blow everyone out of the water. But I mean, C.D. is just fucking impressive, man. And their quick, offense quick doesn't hands scare in the game, baby. Quickest hands in the game with that phone. He, he snatched that phone quick as shit. My man can just yeah, pluck it out of there. Ready. <laughs> Got rid of Byron Jones. Draft Stephon Diggs' brother in the second round. Uh, I guess he's a first round talent. I don't know. Draft Just Frederick's uh, replacement in, <laughs> in like the third and fourth round. Like they had a pretty good draft. And honestly, I know it sucks to say because you're a Redskins fan, but it's like me with the Ravens. It's like you got to give credit where credit is due. They did great. And I think from now on, Jerry just needs to be by himself 
and he should call the uh, – I wish he called the Eagles and be like, hey, yo, Eagles, do you like CD? Well, you can CD these nuts and then draft CD. <laughs> Boom. But no, <laughs> great <laughs> – Good job to the good job to the Cowboys and good job to the 49ers and the Ravens uh, for sure. Um, but now this beat of the week comes from Nudie. But <laughs> the worst, the worst draft. You know, I wanted to add one more on the honor mention, honorable mentions in there too. No, is the Vikings. Um, we will go. We'll stay in their division for sure. But um, the Vikings, absolutely. I think they. They clean this up too. Another one of those that just looked like they were the Mastipos, the the savants of the draft. I mean, they really surprised me. Built a hole for a lot of those holes that we talked about here on the face of the franchise. I mean, uh, one. I mean, I love the Justin Jefferson pick. Uh, in at pick twenty two, he was supposed to go one of the wide receivers that was predicted to go first as one of the wide receiver or one of the first wide receivers that was supposed to go. I believe he was like the fourth or fifth to go. Um, I mean, and then here you just have defense, 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 all quarterbacks. You got edge guys. I mean, I'm just impressed with what they did to solidify that defense. And not a lot of options really here for Kirk, but I mean, I think they're already pretty loaded as it is in terms of offense. So I like a whole lot of what they did in this draft. I but do like this. Justin- please. I do like Justin Jefferson. I do like all their picks. So that's very good that you brought it up. And they did have like 13 picks in round in like day three. So they did. They're they're just loading up with young guys. Um, but yeah, let's stay in their division with the teams that had the worst draft. Um, I'm going to go with the Packers. You know why? Because it wasn't because of Jordan Love. Actually, it's somewhat about Jordan Love. <laughs> but um, you trade up, right, to get Jordan Love when – I think he would have, like, he would have dropped you at 30. That's the problem I had. Not right. because of Jordan Love. It's right. a trade-up. You trade it up, and then if I'm Aaron Rodgers, I see you trade up to get him. I'm pissed. I'm like, dude, we're one game away. We have one wide receiver over 35 catches last year. His name was Devontae Adams. After that, it's nothing. After that, it's Geronimo Allison and Fuggett. Scantley or whatever the fuck who are gone. Jimmy Graham is gone. What do you... Okay, it's like, okay, now you got Jordan Love. Okay, this is a deep draft. Let's see what you do in the second round. You pick A.J. Dillon, a running back from Boston College. Great player. I like him. But you have Aaron Jones. The guy was second right. in fantasy points. Right. First in touchdowns. You're right. Rushing touchdowns. Why? And then it's right. like, okay, you can't fuck up the third round. You fucked it up. You got a tight end. You don't need a tight end. You need a wide receiver. This man, Aaron, I have never seen Aaron Rodgers. Like, if I'm Aaron Rodgers, I'm about to have a heart attack. I How many holes do you trading. think are in his fucking wall? How many laptops do you think he broke watching the draft? Dude, I would too. So there was a stat, and I love this stat. I'm glad I found this stat. It was quarterbacks, current quarterbacks in the NFL, how many touchdowns they've thrown to a first-round wide receiver. How many do you think Aaron Rodgers have thrown, has thrown, like, touchdown-wise? To a first-round wide receiver? Yes. Zero. Two. Both? Uh, I should say pass catcher, because the two touchdowns were to Mercedes Lewis, a tight end, who they traded for midseason. Two, his whole career, his whole career. Devontae Adams, second-rounder. Jordan yep. Jordy Nelson, second-rounder. Yeah. Donald Driver, third-rounder. Greg Jennings, second-rounder. Like, you have the heaviest wide receiver draft of all time. With all those wide receivers that are drafted in that first round are going to be weapons. We are going to be talking about at least eight. Okay, we are. And and you don't pick one of them? You don't pick one of them? 37. 37 were picked. And if you're going to trade one. up, don't trade up for love. Don't trade up for love. Trade up for CD. Jefferson. One? There were so many other options on your table. You didn't need them. You could have picked the I guy who's talking about for the 49ers. Even T. fucking Higgins, I would have preferred that, right? Oh, my God. Even yeah, you 49ers picked the guy right behind him. The the ASU guy, the guy who I was talking about. I can't, Bonaki, whatever his name is. 81 ancient ring span. Do you not yeah. think Aaron Rodgers would like him? My point is I'm frustrated because this is what they did with Brett Favre and Packers do this all the time. You will draft a Hall of Fame quarterback, correct? But the fact that you can't win more than two Super Bowls between two Hall of Fame quarterbacks 
you have a problem. You are thinking way too much into the future, and you didn't do right by Aaron Rodgers, by getting a running back and a tight end with 37 wide receivers, Joey. 37 went in round one, two, and three. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I'm yeah. pissed off. I'm not a Packers fan, but if I was the Packers and I'm one game away, and, I, and it's because my offense is, is like, slow – if it was an lineman, if it was anything like that, yes, because the line needs some help too. But they didn't draft anything that says to Aaron Rodgers, we're trying to win now, and I'd be pissed too. And Aaron Rodgers, by the way, sleeper pick for best quarterback in next fantasy uh, year because he's going to be pissed. He's going to be pissed off. He's going to yeah. be Aaron Rodgers where he's killing everybody in sight. Laser beam. Laser Looking for beam. new contract. Be ready. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I, I needed to get that out. This. No, no worries at all. I mean, you're just upset, dude. And let me explain, because normally, you know, I tell Nude to calm down, tell him to take some deep breaths. But I'm with you on this one, buddy. Because, I, I mean, how can you, as a franchise, with such a historic franchise, I mean, you, you've got, you name it, Lombardi, Favre. I mean, it's, it's just such greatness there in Wisconsin. And then you're just so arrogant and you're so ignorant. I don't understand how you don't get somebody that can make an immediate impact. Like you said, when you're a game away, I get it. You're trying to do what is in your tradition, which is the, the far take what we will have Rogers for five, six years, build him up. Then he'll be ready to lock and load. Listen, one, if you're going to do that, then do everything you can to get Burrow, which I don't think the Bengals were going to give that up anyway. And I don't think you have the resources to go and get him to trade number one or two, you know, it's it it's it, yeah you, you get some explosive receiver it's just it, it flabbergasts me too cut and drop it, it cut and drop me just absolutely dumbfounded there just like no the Patriots, duty just they, like the fucking Patriots I'm gonna get you off for a second I'm gonna allow you to calm down oh, no, here just last bit. point about the Packers because this is the, there was no immediate need that was more glaring than wide receiver for the Packers that's all I'm gonna say right. Go ahead with the Patriots. You you get somebody that you can get attention off Devonte. Yeah, we could go over this for forever. And it's just, yes, go to the Patriots. I mean, I think we, that was the one of the things we had both agreed on when we talked about this draft was Packers draft to receiver. I think there was maybe ten things total, and that was one. Um, but mm. <laughs> so we'll, we'll try Jesus. to digress here. We're both heated up, which is always a problem. So one of us has got to try to control ourselves. I'm gonna do it for us, baby. And let's talk. Let's talk about the Patriots because I mean they were almost just as fucking awful and you went with the Packers so I'm gonna go with the Pats here and decimate them because you also historic franchise going down uh the best franchise of this generation and maybe ever right of what you've done in the past 15 almost 20 years now fair Mm. noon fair then you have the greatest okay the greatest quarterback of all time leave go to Florida get ready for retirement and go do his thing out there, right? Right. So you have issues to address. You already didn't have wide receivers going in. Part of the reason why he left, he already kind of had this in his head, right? He was going to be gone. So you know going into this draft, you know before the season started in 2019, Brady was not coming back based on what Brady had said in the Stern interview that they had already discussed it. So they already knew, one, we're going to have to draft a quarterback. Two, we're going to have to draft a wide receiver. I don't know if they're ready for Lawrence uh, come come the following year. If they're just a lot of people think so. Trevor, that's what uh, every Patriots fan I talk to says is what they're doing, and we'll defend it head up and down. Then again, back to the heaviest wide receiver draft of all time. Fine, if that's what your plan is, get some things for him to be ready for when he comes in. Again, a dra- get a Jefferson. Go get a T. Higgins, which was still available around that time. I, I don't I don't understand at all. Either. And then you draft a fucking kicker, Nudie. <laughs> See, these, these worst picks get me too fired up, man. Then you draft a kicker from fucking Marshall in the in the fifth round. Not only that, and you pointed this out to me, I didn't even realize it. My, I was just so upset and trying to ignore what the hell they did. They drafted a safety in the second round out of Lenore Rhine University. I did a did a favor for everybody looked it up already it is in and i'm not making the name of this town up i swear to god it is in hicksbury <laughs> north carolina okay it is in hicksbury north carolina um i've never heard of this school never heard of the program i mean everyone can call it a build check build uh check in move whatever 
I mean, I, there's a lot of times where I'll put my faith in that man just because he's a he's literally the Lord Seth, right? But I here I don't understand the the method to the madness. Can you help me understand, Nudie? Because I I mean I'm just as upset as you are about the the cheese heads. Well, this is this is just a typical Belichick trick. Like I hate to say, like this is this is my this is my thing is just like the whole pick of the safety from a weird ass college. I mean, is there any other coach that would do this? No, it's Belichick. This is what Belichick does. Now, what does he do with his next two picks? Gets two tight ends. He's trying to remake the magic that was Aaron Hernandez killing, pun intended, and Rob Gronkowski partying, pun intended, in the end zone. Like, how are you going to do that? But with what? Stidham as quarterback? With Brian Hoyer as quarterback? Maybe Cam Newton, because Cam Newton still hasn't been signed. But at this point... Why are the Patriots doing all this shit? Because they're the Patriots. They always do this shit. That's why I didn't pick them as my worst draft. But they were up there. They were top five because at face value, their shit was terrible. Their shit was an absolute donkey show. And that's why if the Packers didn't fuck up so bad at the wide receiver position, didn't fuck up with the Jordan Love, I think I might be there with you with the Pats with the face value. But knowing Belichick and that team altogether, I don't know. I don't know. If I like. I don't know if it's going to be good. They, those tight ends might be Hall of Famers. That that safety might be the best safety in the goddamn league. I don't know, but at face value, it looks terrible. And I guess from those legendary the- defensive uh, eyes that seen many battles, who knows? I mean, he definitely knows more than we do, right? I mean, we all know how much he gets hyped up as this like this but- big like master of defense, right? So I feel like I've used Miss Steve and Savant too much already in this show. But I mean, I, I, so maybe see something we don't, but I just, I don't understand it. But my point is like, if it was any other team, we'd say this is a, like, those were bullshit picks. But because it's the Patriots, we we're don't like, know. Maybe not. Yeah. It's like, fuck, maybe this guy has something. I don't know. This is the guy who went into the rain and went to like middle Tennessee university and went to some guy who went undrafted and, I don't know. It's just wild. Just I guess I, we're going to need those two tight ends in the third. We're going to need the boy from Lenore Run, Hicksville, there in North Carolina. And we're going to need Justin Rory Wazer, kicker from Marshall. We are Marshall. I guess altogether, those are the surprise picks, but I know we have other surprise picks in the works. So, Wait, what so was your surprise? Thank you. Can I do something? That, I want to do something to make me happy. Calm us down from these worst, awful moves by these normally very well-respected franchises. Maybe we don't see the writing or the iron in the fire. Maybe that's why we're not GMs. Or maybe it's their loss. I think it's their loss because uh, the team that did see my vision and a, te- a guy that I absolutely love is named James Morgan. He was projected, I believe, to be drafted in the fifth, right. some even saying sixth round. Um, got scooped up in the fifth, or excuse me, fourth round. And this boy is looking like the sleeper quarterback of the draft. I mean, I am absolutely in love with him and the team that picked Jets, him up. Though. The Jets, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Dirty Sammy, are we questioning him? Is there QB controversy here, Nude? What are we thinking, man? Because I'll tell you, I mean, like I said, this kid, James Morgan, is got a rocket. He is accurate, mobile. I, I like him a lot, and I don't think he got enough attention during this draft. No, I think what made it a surprise pick is who he got drafted in front of. He got drafted by Fromm and Eason, mm. who we thought yeah. were two quarterbacks that would get picked behind um, – like Tua and Herbert and Burroughs, we thought those would be the fourth and fifth. Then you have my surprise pick later, and then um, yours, James Morgan. But I think what Lewis Riddick said it on, like, nail on the head, they picked them because of upside, because Mono Gate was that important to them that they needed a quarterback just in case my man Sam Dirty Darnold gets another Mono case and that we have a guy who has a strong arm and can throw it 80 yards. But my man... Was a surprise pick. I like him, but don't get your hopes up, Jets. That's all I'm saying. I hey, you know what? I'm gonna back him up real quick before we get off him. I like him a lot, dude. I like him a lot. He's a good old boy in terms of character too, not just play. He's a good old boy. Uh, went to Aspawan High School. 
Okay, small town, hard work. I don't think he's going to be putting his dick into uh, porn stars. I don't think he's going to be getting mono, making out with fans. Congratulations. I, I, <laughs> I think he's going to be the straight and narrow leader that we need the Jets to come back and finally find glory for the first time since uh, Joe. Uh, why am I blanking here? Holy shit, Broadway Joe. Thank you. You're welcome. But, Not uh, you. <laughs> Thank you, my brain. <laughs> but... First of all, Mark Sanchez. Let's not forget about my man, Mark Sanchez. Of course, how could we? Let's not <laughs> even bring it up. Keep, keep going. <laughs> but my favorite surprise pick was a person in your division who shocked the world. Who shocked the world. Literally, it was a pick that came in, and it was four picks behind, and even Adam Schefter couldn't wait to tweet about it. Schefter was like the surprise of the draft. And I was like, oh, shit. What is it? What is it? What is it? The fifth. Philadelphia Eagles picked Jalen Hurts, not in the third, not in the fourth, not in the fifth, not in the sixth, in the second round. Their second pick, a team with so many injuries, a team with so many holes that they won the division last year with a practice squad team. But guess what they said? Carson Wentz, you've been wincing way too much. You got hurt so many fucking times you need to get Jalen Hurts. Now, my favorite thing about the entire draft when they drafted Jalen Hurts was the backtracking. The backtracking was amazing (laughs) by the Eagles. Top three quotes of all time. We want to be a quarterback factory like the Patriots because, oh, you just saw Jacoby Brissett doing great. Jimmy G doing great. Hoyer, who did great with Cleveland, Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, One one problem there, guy. They had Tom Brady, Hall of Fame, best quarterback of all time. They drafted a, they drafted those quarterbacks to back him up because it's like, we know Tom Brady's our guy. But is Wentz really your guy? We don't know because he's always hurt. Then they backtracked again, and they said Jalen Hurts could be a Taysom Hill type of player, a guy who can be Mitch Match and all that stuff. Well, here's the problem. Taysom Hill, a lot more athletic, a lot faster than him, a lot more uh, a lot accuracy, more faster. a lot, a lot more faster, a lot more faster than him. But Been some time in Hicksville, uh, Bear, North Carolina, haven't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's from Oklahoma, or he's from Alabama. Look yeah. him up. But point is, this was a this was a wake up call for Wentz, a wake up call for the organization to say, you know, we paid you all this money, but you keep getting hurt. We might actually put hurt when you get hurt. So don't get hurt. So there you go. Jalen Hurd, what surprise pick of the draft what? by the fans. What? I mean, yeah. I, I, <laughs> first of all, it cost me uh, uh, about $300 on that. I was pretty positive that there was no, everyone was going to be smart enough. Again, thinking more than I should ha- of these GMs, I guess, nude. Uh, that he's got cancer. I, I, this is not going to be a successful quarterback. In the in the league, I think it's another guy. You're talking injury prone. Wentz he Wentz is too much. Same thing with Hurts. Jalen Hurts can, always gets hurt. I don't I don't trust in him at all. I don't think this is a guy that um, is going to translate well at all to the next level of the game. Um, and again, another team that needed to address a shit ton of things, including that wide receiver position, and didn't um, at least in that first round where they need uh, in those first couple rounds where they needed to. So I mean. I, I just, uh, yeah, it's uh, another pick that pisses me off, another move that pisses me off. But, um, you know, you, you got to live with what it is. And speaking of picks that piss you off, we'll go right into it. Let's just rip the Band-Aid off because I know you want to touch on uh, the one that everyone loves to be nice and cheesy, Jordan Love. I mean, dude, I love the kid. Like, the kid was supposed to, this kid was my pick to be, like, the quarterback of the draft. Like, everybody's going to be like, wow. Court- like, the Patrick Mahomes thing. Like, Mitch Trubisky and Watson were picked before him. It's like, okay, Patrick's not getting the love that he should. He should be the number one quarterback. That's how I thought about love. Because it's like, he went to Utah State. He had a great junior season. Lost legit. If you look at the, the roster, the flip, the change, no quarterback could have had success that he had. It's crazy. But yeah. then he goes to a place like Green Bay, which it should be a good place, but it's a place that already has a quarterback probably for the next three, four, five years still. It's like, dude, I don't know, man. It's just like Jordan Love. Come on, man. Like, 
I'm happy you're going to be good because you're in you're in Green Bay, and I think Green Bay just turns out Hall of Fame quarterbacks. So in in that sense, he's going to be good. But it was surprised because he's not in a situation he'll start now, and I guess that's good for him. But like Packers, you really surprised everybody by trading up five five picks up to get him, and it's just like, dude, what the fuck. I think that was the biggest mistake for sure was the the, the trading yeah. up of it all, right? I think that they don't get any heat for this at all because he 100% falls to them if they just are patient. I mean, I, I like Jordan Love a whole lot too. I think he's an impressive talent. I think he's going to make an impact when he finally does get to start. But I just think you, you don't need to rush to get in. I don't even think necessarily – you need it, like you said. You have you don't really need to pounce on a quarterback. This is not, you know, it's also not a league anymore where you train, let a guy sit for four or five years and learn off. Like I know that's the Packer way, but it's not really that kind of league anymore. And I think you make the quarterback suffer with the way the game is now versus help the quarterback. Well, I'm going to put it in this perspective: if you're if if Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre were quarterbacks of the of the Redskins, like you would want to win now because like. I right. think because like those teams like the Redskins, like the Bengals, been trying to find a quarterback for how many years? It's like, dude, like you're wasting. Yeah, they're classic revol- yeah. revolving door, right? Yeah, and I think it just goes to show, like, man, like what a draft that was, like all together. It was just like the virtual draft togetherness. Like the virtual draft was actually not that bad, in my opinion. I liked it. Like the biggest losers in the whole thing was definitely like. Uh, girlfriends in general uh, with Isaiah <laughs> Wilson, his, his white girlfriend getting uh, yanked by his mom. I'm saying the white girlfriend because it's funny. No, yeah. she gave, she's given an attitude. That, that like, was a great to, moment. To a, you give an attitude, listen, to a guy who's done that to an African-American mom and got demolished, you as a girlfriend taking away her baby spotlight, you were lucky she didn't slap you on national television. C.D. Lamb's girlfriend the hoe of all hoes taking his phone hey, and that, that profession, grabbing professional hoe, baby. And like going like this and her, his mom geeking out. His mom was laughing at her and her, 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 her she's like, eh. and like the backtracking backtracking is great. Oh, he was on the phone with Dallas and his uh, agent was FaceTiming. I thought I'd be a good girlfriend to answer. Bitch liar, bitch. You lying. He already had different bitches and different area codes. He was getting text messages left and right saying, I can't wait to suck your CD fucking $100 million dick in fucking Dallas. Like, that's exactly what happened. He was pro ready, man. Like I said, another new pro ready, Chase Young. Chase Young, pro ready. Again, had five trap phones just there moving for everybody. He had his trapper, a shooter with him in a very PG County style. All they do is make great athletes and great trappers. Um, <laughs> do not take that to offense by any means. It just kind of is what it is. Chicken um, heads. You are chicken heads. Jesus- Chase is already boat, baby, and he he was ready to rock, but that was by far the best part of the virtual draft, was just seeing all the nonverbal interactions kind of go on throughout the whole thing. Everybody set up. Uh, was That was enjoyable. Like, uh, I saw the Mike McCarthy, just the average man set up. Then you had, like, the, again, Bobby Axelrod set ups. And, I mean, it was that that I did enjoy. It was an interesting draft, to say the least. I, I wish we could have been on a boat, though, bitch. I like, I like the – Two things I really want to touch on because of this virtual draft is if you're a draftee in the NFL, the ESPN will definitely find something bad about you and say, like, if your dad died, addicted to cracked, um, if you were shot or if you were stabbed, they'll say it. They just don't. There's a lot of, there was a lot of, this guy's story is insane. You're like, you're sharing such personal information. Like, it was, he's yeah, wearing I guess this is where we are now, right? And he was wear- he's wearing 69 because he was on a bus where six kids died in a crash, and he wears the nine because he got shot nine times like 50 cents. That's exactly how they were doing it all. You had to long. choose the number 69 out of all the numbers you could have chosen there. Nudie. I mean, anyway. it's just the first one. But And then uh, Roger Goodell is not funny. He tried to be funny. He's not. He's a robot. You're a piece of shit. Are you kidding Pop-off. me? I think he should do stand-up. He is garbage. Oh, hey, I have M&Ms. Dave Look, Chappelle. It's small. No, it's a white dad. Like, he was a white dad. He was like, look at my M&Ms. I finished half of them. Ha, ha, ha. It's like, come on, man. All right. Well, that was the draft. We have news and notes. Let's just get right into it. Sure. Um, hey, fuck. Jameis Winston, Not a lot. Not a lot. Still very slow coming from the draft. Still very, yeah, very slow. Yeah, there's like five or four. We touched on uh, – Trent. we'll just touch on the trades. Trent Williams. I was going to start with Jameis, but uh, Trent Williams traded to the 49ers. 
for a fifth this year, third next year, um, winners. Um, I think both sides, uh, Redskins get rid of their headache. 49ers get the get their L- LT that they needed. Goes back to his old head coach, the Kyle Shanahan. Um, I, I, I'm going to stop you just dead in your tracks. I just want to <laughs> touch on this for, for a brief moment. I know we're, we're kind of, we're we've been going for a minute on the draft. Go off, King! I, I, not even go off, man. It's not even worth my time to go off here. It's just, yes, we get rid of a headache, but it's just so sad to see how this ended up, to see how this cat ended up, to see like how dismantled and mismanaged we handled him. Um, it's all on us, if you ask me. I mean, we we didn't properly attend to this injury. We tried to force him back on the field. I get his grievances. I get why he was upset. I, I don't – I think we were more the headache to him, if anything. And then he gets straight in, fortunately, because you had a year off of football for a third and fifth. I think he's worth way more than that. Um it just sucks, man. Again, not worth my effort to get upset here, Nudy. It just it's just truly heartbreaking, man. It is what it is at the end of the day. You got at least got compensation and it's whatever. Part, brother. Yeah. And um, we talked about Matt Breida uh, got traded to the Dolphins for a fifth round or sixth rounder. Um, he will join a backfield with Jordan Howard and now their new quarterback, Tua Tavaloa. Um, mm. Changes his pace back. Um, a guy who keeps getting hurt. So first of we'll all, this Patrick will definitely be starting all 16 games this season. But at one point, at my in my in my grand scheme of things, I have Ryan Fitzpatrick starting week one through like six, and then the magic just goes away and he throws seven picks, and then we're back to Tua. So, <laughs> but he's gonna figure out a way to make the magic stay this year. Yeah. All right. Now to the people who got signed. Two quarterbacks that we really enjoy. One being famous Jameis Winston, signed with the division rival division rival Saints for one point one million to be uh, Drew Brees' backup. Um, my man got LASIK, told the Saints on a Zoom call, saying, "I can read signs and license plates. I could not read before." My man went through life Wait, with that, bad I did not vision. Hear this story. I did not hear this story. Bad vision his entire life throws 30 picks, 30 touchdowns, and leads the league in yards, my man is going to light the league up if Drew gets hurt. He is going to be an MVP candidate, and he is the best um, hype man. He hyped mans himself so good. He said that there were better offers on the table from the Steelers and Patriots, and both teams came out and said, we have never talked to Jameis in our life. And that is amazing. I love this man with all my heart. Jameis needs to be the starting quarterback for a team next year. I need to see the LASIK in action. Love this man. <laughs> I did not know that such goal, man. I did not know this story at all. <laughs> First of all, mustache QB uh, in your fantasy draft next year. Mustache. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That is incredible news. Um, yeah, I hope he starts somewhere, too. I hope uh, – I mean, I would never hurt for Breezy to get hurt, but some way, somehow, there's some other trades that happen after the 30-day rules up, and we shall bang, shall boom. He's starting somewhere uh, next year, and we do have football next year. Boom. And the, la- the other one was the Red Rocket. Andy Dalton gets released by the Bengals. Not only- <laughs> My three- favorite news of the week, duty. Three days, three days later, goes back to his home state, Texas. He is now the backup quarterback of Dak, the sack, Prescott, for $3 million base salary with incentive $7 million. The reason why I bring up the incentive is because Dak has yet to sign his franchise tag. They have until June 15th to sign, get him the biggest contract for a quarterback, which Dak wants. So there is a possibility C.D., Gallup, and Cooper are going to catch balls from Andy, the Red Rocket, Dalton, back Woo! at ATM Team Stadium, where he started his college career. My man is going in there and saying, Texas, I'm back. I hate to admit it, I'm a Skins fan through and through. I love them to death. We know that that's my number one ride till I die, right in back of me right now. But Cowboys are going 16-0 Dalton starts. Cowboys are going 16-0 if that red rocket starts firing rifles to that elite receiving core <laughs> they got over there. You got Zeke in the back. I mean, there's they say there's that one piece missing. There's that golden goose that holds you up and keeps you strong. This glue that holds everything to that, together. It's not Dak. It's not Dak. 
it is a sweet, sweet, beautiful redheaded boy named Andy Dalton. I'm rooting for him. I he's now out of my division, so I'm rooting for him. He's gonna be a great quarterback for the Cowboys. Dak, I'm sorry, the rain is over. You just been replaced. And um, best move of the off season. By far, besides the Giants hiring uh, Joe Judge as their head coach, best move of the offseason, Andy Dalton. This is to the top Cowboys. five. This is top five in my life. This is this is better than when Flacco got a contract with the Broncos, and I knew he was going to suck. I just love it. First of all, he did not suck. He's still elite, and that was a well-deserved contract. Do not do not hate on that move, please. Do uh, not disparage uh, that. Surprise, surprise, surprise draft, Broncos surprise draft. Uh, just a side note. Uh, weapons everywhere. So, Drew Locke, this is your make-or-break season. Better start. And this is a public service announcement. Cam Newton and J- uh, Javion Clown Man Clowny. You are the two left. Oh, and Freeman. But Freeman, fuck him. The other, you two yeah. need to get off your high horses. Realize that, Clowny, you're not the best pass rusher. You're not going to get the money you want. Cam, you're not going to be a starter anywhere. Sign with a team that you could back up for a couple years and then be a starter next year or the year after. Hey, Guess what? There's a team in Los Angeles that needs you, and there's a team in New England that needs you. Go fucking do something about it, dumbass. Sorry, that's me. Clearly, they don't want you, though. I mean, clearly, they don't want you, or I think, or either you didn't want what they were offering. But I mean, I don't see KM working over there at the Pats at all, to be honest. Um, I just don't see him working in that system. He's too flashy. He's too obnoxious. He's it's too much KM and too much Patriots way. Don't mesh together. Um, yeah. I'm not surprised. It's their attitude. It's their candor. It's the way they hold themselves. It's pretty simple, if you ask me. I think Cam gets landed somewhere. And I think even Clowney eventually gives in and realizes he's not going to get his money um, and, and takes that near deal. Is that still on the table or is that gone at this point? No, at this point, it's a leave it or. Yeah, it's like see, it's between the Seahawks and the Titans the last time I read. So it's that deal that was like, I think it was like $18.5 million. I don't fucking know. He wanted to be 18. in the 20s. He just wanted to be in the twenties to be the top, like the top three paid pass rushers, which I I described as Demarcus Lawrence, Khalil, uh, Khalil Mack, and fucking JJ Watt. Like those are three. Pretty sure Hall. Of, like if they keep going on their path, Hall of Famers. Like it's like you're not up there. Right. You're you're not in those numbers at all. Khalil Khalil linebacker. But yeah, I mean. You're, you're not at that. You're right under that. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. There's a certain tier of those elite defensive end pass rushers, and you're right under at least the yep. last couple. You have the potential to go there, right? Yep. But he just, again, it's the same thing it's always been with him is it's effort. It's effort, so he slides right under there. Yes, men will always fuck you up. Remember that. That is a, that is a public service announcement. And, uh, mm. yeah, baby, great show today. I loved it. Um, closing remarks, Joe. I love it. Don't surround yourself with yes, man. I think that was a great way to put a bow on the show. Have somebody that's going to smack you in the face a little bit, tell you like it is, tell you the truth for your little dose of free therapy on top of face of the franchise. We love you all. Stay strong. Stay beautiful. Go DM at Four Corners Radio right now to join that umbrella we talked about at the beginning. I'll name it one more time. Of course, it's hooping and hollering. Of course, it's bread and butter. Of course, it's free therapy. Of course, it's face of the franchise. Of course, it's five holers. Come be part of the brand. Of course, it's Last Nice Guys. Did not forget you. Got to say to them for last, the Last Nice Guys. Um, go DM us right now and be under the great brand that is Four Corners Radio. Whoop, whoop. And you know, from Little Joe and from Pharaoh and Face of the Franchise family, stay breezy, stay easy, one love. Ha ha!